What's up, everybody? Neville here today. What's going on? I try to make it look like I'm in a forest. I don't know if that worked or not, but whatever. All right, so the work for today is going to be based around a book. So I'm doing a book called that um, I wanted to write about a death calculator. And let me pull this up for you. All right, so I want to make this book, and it's going to be a really short book, kind of like this. So this was my original book called This Book Will Teach You How to Write Better, and it's very short. Uh, I don't even know how many pages it is. I think like 48, including the index. Very short, quick. I liked doing it. Um, so I want to make another one like this that I can put out to the world. It's not going to be about copywriting. Um, I decided against that. I thought this one was about copywriting. That's good enough. So I'm going to make this book. And the problem with a book is huh, it, it feels a little bit more permanent than a typical blog post. So for example, this blog post I could put out and change it all the time. A, a book you can change. You can update on kdp.amazon.com, uh, the Kindle thing. But it's just it's a bit harder. So you want to make it good. And it has to be like in a proper order. And then you also have to format it to be on the pages, right? So like you got to, you know, chapter two has to start here, not down here on the middle of the page or something. So it's a little bit harder to make a book. And so I got to do all of this uh, by the end of the month. So it's the 12th right now. So I have a little over 15 days or so to finish it all off. And I don't want to finish it on the last day. So I'll be writing a book. Um... Well, this might be a little boring to watch because I'm going to be just going through my book and talking about it. But if you want to join, feel free. So the concept of the book, and I'm just talking this out for my own need. Sorry, one second. I'm going to grab some water real quick. All right. So the concept of the book is going to be about this death calculator. Now, let's, let's take a look at this. So this says, when do you want to die? So it's actually preloaded with the date I want to die, which is basically the day I'm going to kill myself. Don't worry. It's nothing soon. <laughs> it's very far in the future. It's a mental construct more than a plan. So it says I have 48 years, three months, and 15 days to live. So I picked my 85th birthday, so November 17, 2067, to I'm done. Like, I'm, I'm just done with life at that point. So I have 48 years to live. That means everything I want to do Everything I want to accomplish, all the fun I want to have, has to be done within 48 years. And to be fair, when you think about how people age, you know, right now I'm in my 30s, so I'm healthy and spry and I can do stuff. I could go climb a mountain if I want to. But you know, when you get 40, it, things start to ache a little bit more. 50, things start to ache a little more. And then 60, things statistically start to kind of, in terms of physical fitness, you start to decline a bit. You know, you don't see a lot of 60 year olds doing backflips. You don't see a lot of 70 year olds, you know, riding a skateboard half pipe. You don't see a lot of 80 year olds doing a swan dive. They don't see a lot of 90 year olds, you know, Tokyo drifting cars around. And, and that's just a, a reality of life that I will be subject to also. So in that 48 years that I'm going to live, I have to do everything that I want to that's very physically demanding before, say, the age of 60s, 50s, before that. So um, that's what this is about. Then the other thing that this is, uh, I collected all this actuarial data that you can see down here. So here's male life expectancy chart. So I'm 37 years old, so I can go down over here and look this up. I made it a little bit, e so this number, these numbers are a little hard to understand. So what I did is I created this. So 37 male. So this pulls from that chart. So what this says is, as a 37-year-old man, there's a 0.22 chance that you will die in one year. That means within 365 days from now, um, there's a 0.22% chance I'll die in that time. So 0.22 is not that high. That means I have a 99.78% uh, chance I'll live. So the chance I'm going to die is low, and the chance I'm going to survive is very high right now. Um, 95%, so let's say roughly 96% of the people you're still, your same age are still alive. 
So that means people who were born on the same day as I am, 96% of them or so are alive. That's pretty good. Um, and then I have approximately 41 point something years to live. Okay, approximate age of death, 78. So this is actuarial data. So a lot of people think, like I say, I want to off myself at 85. They're like, well, what if you live a lot longer? Well, I'm just like, okay, sure. It's a possibility. Absolutely. But the likelihood that I'll actually die earlier than that is very high. In fact, 78. So that means I'm going to probably die of just naturally seven years before my 85th birthday. This is just data. There's no, there's no, you know, th this is reality. So that's what this book is going to be about. And I've had this idea in my head since I was around in high school. And I used to read a lot of biographies. And, um, and it, 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 it very much dawned on me that a lot of successful people valued the quality of their life rather than the length. And then I also used to go to India all the time with my family. And uh, besides our immediate family, everyone else lived there. And we'd see these old people that would like pray to be killed that, or pray for God to take them. And I always thought that was really sad that like, why can't we help these people and put them out of their misery if they're so old and in pain all the time, right? Um, and it, it, was, it was very sad to me that they would keep these very, very elderly people who, who their wish was to die, they'd keep them alive. It just felt unfair to me. And so I always thought, you know what? I can't control when I was born, but I can control when I die. And so I decided that 85 is going to be the day that it won't be before my natural cause of death because that's actually 78 for me. Um, and it's also like, you know, if by 85 you haven't lived a really good life, you know, what have you been doing? Kind of been wasting it. So this mental construct is something I've told to a lot of people. And it's a weird conversation at first because I say, like, I know the day I'm going to die, November 17, 2067. They're always like, what? Neville, are you okay? I'm like, what? It's not a suicide wish. It's just a, it's a mental construct to say that if I want to do stuff, here is my mammal expected life as, as an animal. This is how long I'm probably going to live. And then they have the typical things of like, well, what if you're what if you won't die before then? What if medicine keeps up and you can live till 200? Well, like I always tell people, this is a mental construct, not a plan. So if at 85 I'm having a good time, I got a bunch of grandkids running around and some puppies and it's a, it's a, I'm nice and spry and I can get up and be active, then yeah, I'll change my mind. But at the same time, it's also like the numbers don't reflect that that would be accurate. So I'd like to live in reality, not in fantasy hypothetical land. And in reality, this is going to be the case. So that's what this book is about. So let's, uh, if you have any questions... Uh, Shikar, by the time you are 78, Nev, you would have achieved Eugene Schwartz, Joe Sugarman level of respect and recognition. Ha <laughs> ha, nice. Um, that's, that's pretty funny, uh, Shikar. Well, you know, I mean, if you, if you want to, the thing is like, I know that if I want to achieve something like that, then I have to do it on this. Um, I'm not, I do like respect and all that stuff. I don't think it's the main purpose of life, but I think it's very important. And I would like to do that by just doing a lot of good work and hopefully, that comes along with it. Some sort of level of recognition and respect. I think I actually got a lot of that. Like if I died today, I'd be fine. You know, I'd be like, oh, pretty good life. This is pretty awesome. I don't document much personal stuff on the internet. Like my, my blog, Nev blog, uh, it, it, it's just more like a business kind of goal blog, but I rarely do very personal stuff on it. So people are like, people ask me personal questions sometimes. I'm like, I just don't answer those in public. Like, I, there's just not something I want to put out there. So, yeah. So, this book. Let's let's get started. So, the first thing I need to do is organize the contents of the book. That's what, that's what I wanted to get done today. So, I'll try to talk through this as much as possible so it's not super boring for you to listen to. All right. So the contents of this book, by knowing when you die, you can live better. By knowing when you die, decisions are easier. The average human life. What 
cause me to think like this. Death calculator stats. Actual death stats when you will die. So I think one of the most important things about when you write a book, which is like, to be honest, like this is just kind of like a long blog post, is you got to get the structure down. That's very important. Once you get the structure down, you just fill in the sections. Like, so for example, what caused me to think like this? Um, I, like, I already know the answer to that. So I could just like fill out that section. Whereas if you just write this book without a structure, you would start rambling, which is what I originally did in this document. So... Things that make people happy throughout time. Ways you can live forever. Okay, so that's probably something at the end of the book. The aging process, that would definitely be something after the death stats. I'll argue for it. The purpose of life. What happens when you die? What is that section about? Okay, interesting. So I think that will go. Here. The purpose of life. I need to explain that first before this. So put that there. You did it. What is this section? I think it's like the ending. Okay, so that's like it's like the ending to the book. We did it. Ways you can live forever. Let's put that ahead. Uh, my phone is buzzing within a flash flood alert, so maybe I'll die today instead. Um, actual death stats when you will die. Maybe I should put this at the very, very end. We did it. Entitle that something else. But not your life. Ooh, this is the end of this book, but not your life. Interesting. I like that ending. So I think this is the contents of the book. So that means it'll be a total of uh, 16 chapters. And each chapter is really short. I mean, probably like two or three pages. And keep in mind, it's like pages that are this big. This is, I mean, this is like one, two, three, four, like four paragraphs per page. Maybe a little more. It's not very long. I think the part that will take up the most on this is going to be these charts. I'm going to include these charts in there and these actuarial data charts will take up a decent amount of space. Like I think I could only fit 20 lines or so in small text per page. And the, the probability of dying is very different based on male and female, like by a lot. So I think I'm going to include both. Um, the other thing I was thinking is maybe including sentences like this. And just putting those in there. See, look, look, watch, watch what happens whenever I go from male to female. So it says I'm going to die at 78.32. A female would die at 82.34. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Females get like a full four plus more years on average, if not more. So, hey, be mine. You say I look Indian. I, I am half Indian. I'm Zoroastrian, so I'm half Indian, half Persian by descent. So, I'm Iranian from like a thousand years ago, and the rest has been Indian. Uh, I'm not Russian. But yeah, I am like our fam my family is from India. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm Daisy. Yeah. 
Um, by knowing when you die, you can plan your life better. Decisions are easier. Average human life. The death calculator. Hmm. I always like making it toward the table of contents or the kind of the, the list of sections. You could basically understand the entire post just from that. I always like that concept. So by knowing when you're going to knowing when you're going to die, so I'm gonna explain that concept here. You live better. So it's a realistic annual. So let's move this book around. I think this is good. So I'm going to go through this chapter list one more time. Make sure this is good. And I'm going to move the doc around. Know when you're going to die. By knowing when you're going to die, you live better. You plan your life better. Decisions are easier. Human life will cause me to think like this. I think this should go above. Delta calculator, data and stats. Huh. I have that in there several times. Ah, okay, so this is gonna go at the end of the book. Ways you can live forever. Okay. So this section should not be called the death calculator. Remove. To shorten this parents will die friends will die spouse will die huh knowing when you're going to die insert bookmark write those chapters. Wow, I did not write those chapters. So what caused me to think like this? So I'm going to take that, put it at the top. Okay, so I'm gonna um, so what I'm gonna do 
Okay, so I'm gonna start using the outline feature on Google Docs, and the way that that works is it goes by titles. So I'm gonna make everything heading one, that's a title, so I can start using this outline feature rather than this jank ass you know, table of contents over here. Um, so knowing when you're gonna die is the first thing. So the, what caused me to think like this is the next heading. Um, I'm just gonna remove all these links, I think. For now, because I'm gonna move all these things around. So what caused me to think like this? Title, and then title text should be bold and size 24. Say 22, it's a little big. Okay, um, so heading one, heading one to match. Allows me to think like this. Okay, I'm gonna have to open this up on split screens. So I can look at this at the same time. So I'm going to shuffle this around and remove all of these bookmarks. So what caused me to think like this is the next chapter, the average human life, what it involves is the next one. Remove, cut. And it's going to go after what caused me to think like this. And I'm going to make this a heading one. Um, these are text, so different sections. I'm going to remove these from outline because that's not important. The average human life. Okay. So I can remove this now. Remove good or long life. Um, do I have that in here? Actually don't have that in there. I think this is quality of life. Hold on, one sec. So, huh, I don't have this part in there. That's weird. Uh, all right, so good life versus long life. I'm gonna have to add that section underneath here. The average human life. I'm going to make that a title. 
I gotta work on that one. So, let's say, good life, long life. All right, the death calculator, data and stats. So that part I had mislabeled. Um, the death calculator, data and stats. All right, so let's add that over here. Actually, you know, I added that down. This would make way more sense if it was up there. So I'm gonna take this section, put it right there. I'm gonna remove this link, control data stats when you die. Don't need, these are some random notes I had. So actual death stats, good life versus long life. I want that to be there. Paste. Okie dokie. Death stats when, when you die. Um, this needs to be a heading. And we're doing the headings so it goes in the new Google outline tray. It's a very helpful little thing. So like if I want to skip to a section, I could just do this and it automatically goes based off where you put titles and headings and subheadings. So right now you can see that it has like all these things, but I don't want all those. I just want the actual chapters. So I'm delineating them all as heading one. So actual, okay, the aging process. Um, let's go to that. Where is the aging process? Okay, so I'm gonna steal all this, jaboink, and put that after actual death stats. Uh, the aging process, remove this bookmark because we don't need it anymore. Make this a header. What am I doing? Sorry, here we go. Um, Okay. Um, I don't want these examples showing up in my outline, so I'm going to get rid of those. Aging process. Remove link. What happens when you die? All right. Um, what is that section? Let's take that. Let's steal that. And that goes after the aging process. That goes down here. Remove link, make title. Oh, not title, make heading one, my bad. There you go. What happens when you die? Okay, so remove. Arguments against thinking. Okay, so arguments against thinking when you're gonna die is actually already there. I'm just gonna make it the heading one. Sweet, remove the bookmark. Parents will die, friends will die, spouse will die. So this is a thing Hmm. Arguments against thinking you're gonna die. All right, so this is a section that I wanna talk about, about like the quality of life. And it, hmm. Not sure exactly how I'm going to say that. Um, I think what I'm going to talk about is this death calculator thing, and that the argument that when you're really old, almost everyone you know is dead already. See, that that's the problem. So, what I kind of want to show, 
is that when you're 20 or when you're 18, let's say I'm an 18 year old male, there's almost no chance that I'm going to die in the, in the next year. Um, and 98.93% of the people my age are still alive and have a long life ahead of me. So that's a good outlook on life. So I'm going to put that in there. Um, but then let's say I'm an 81 year old male. <laughs> you know, this, this change, let's say 85. You know, this is, there's a non-trivial chance that in the next year you will die. And 34% of the people your same age are still alive. That means 65% of people you know that your age are dead. <laughs> so that means you've been to a lot of funerals. Every time you get a call, someone's dying. Um, and you, you have only approximately five years left to live. So... I think when you look at the data like this, it kind of shows a bleak, a bleaker picture when you're older. Okay. Um, I'm satisfied. All right. The purpose of life. So that's the next one. So arguments against thinking you're going to die. The aging process. Parents will die. Wait, where did that part go? Oh, I didn't put that in here. Um, arguments against thinking, and then I'm going to put this down there. All right. Uh, the purpose of life. Let's see, where is that? I want to remove that link, and I want to put it. Below, parents will die. All right, and then make that a heading. Okay. Purpose of life. Remove the bookmark because it doesn't exist. Things that make people happy through time. I think that's next, right? Nope. Things that make people happy through time. Let's s -s steal. So this goes after the purpose of life. Okay, let's get rid of bookmark. It doesn't exist. And normal text heading. Um, let's get rid of all these jazzes over here. Time. Rid of the bookmark. Ways you can live forever. All right. Um, now that one is just right below. So we just got to shuffle that one around. And I think we're almost done now. That's it. Right? Yeah. Look at that. We made some good progress, my friends. Thanks for helping me out. This is otherwise not very glamorous work. But because you're watching me, uh, for some reason, more productive. Um, ways you can live forever. Remove and I'm gonna add the title heading. Sorry, and then we did it. Um, remove title, remove bookmark, and then make this a heading. All right, da 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 is that it? So 16 sections. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, Beavis? That doesn't add up to... You know, I... I know what I did. These three sections right here don't exist. And I think the reason is these don't need to be their own chapters. 
So I think I'm going to make, I'm going to cut these out. And I'm just going to put them at the bottom as like the statement. Like that. I don't think they each deserve their own chapters. They're kind of like the same damn thing over and over. So, all right. So now there's 13 chapters. Is that correct? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yes. Now, I want to add one more chapter at the end. Um, that's going to be a follow along the journey. book and, and basically what I want to do here is tell people where they can find more about me if they so choose right it's not super important that they find out more about me but maybe they want to so I'd probably put like copywriting course.com nevlog.com swipefile.com I guess maybe like my social media stuff, Twitter, com slash nevmed. Copywriting. Um, Choose to live. Calculator. Put this there. I don't need to put swipe file. That doesn't matter as much, it seems. Twitter. <sighs> Personal log. Copywriting log. What's going on with the font, font over here?
Oh, I should probably put the death calculator. Death calculator. This makes the book a lot easier. Like, <laughs> it, it's kind of crazy. Like, a book is just like a long blog post. It's not that much different. And we basically just outlined this whole blog post for us. I close down all these other windows here. All right. So yeah, we we outlined the whole damn book right here. Um, I think I need to reload this. Why is that? Oh, I'm an idiot. Sorry. Um, I need to add this in this section, the contents of the book. So I wonder if I can link. I haven't used the Google feature too much. The headings. <gasps> oh, that is so cool. I can do it. So follow along the journey, that's really neat. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link up this section. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Correct, we got it. All right, um, contents of this book. So you can actually link, so for example, follow along the journey, because I made it a title, um, I could actually just link it like this. Let's see if this works. Follow along the journey, command K, headings, follow along the journey. Oh, snap. That's pretty cool. Wait, let's see how that works. Follow on the journey, apply. So now I can click this and it'll theoretically take me to that section. Nice. Okay, that's pretty sweet. I'm gonna do that for all of them. So, knowing when you're going to die. Headings, link. What caused me to think like this? Headings, link. The average human life, what it involves, link. Good life or long life? Actual death stats, when will you die? The aging process. Arguments against thinking. You're gonna. That's a weird sentence. That's a weird way to put it. Um, parents will die. Friends will die. Spouse will die. Whew, that's a morbid chapter. Um, the purpose of life. All right. Headings. Purpose of life. Things that make people happy throughout time. Okay, ways you can live forever. Ways you can live forever. Or longer, or at least longer. Let's go to that section. What's that titled? At least longer. Okay. We did it.
into the book, but not your life. <laughs> and follow along the journey. I think I already linked that. Okay. So, all the chapters are linked. Cool. Um, now, the easy part is just writing some of these excess chapters. <laughs> Ironically, writing the book is not exceptionally hard. Uh, sorry, got to take a couple text messages. Do. Uh, let's see. Um, I just okay. I'll take a second over here to answer any questions that uh, you may have to make this live stream slightly more interesting for some of you. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Cheryl Brown Martin, love your monitor screen. That was very helpful. Hey Cheryl, thanks. Yeah, showing the screen is helpful. Um, I try to do that. Otherwise, if you just watch me, it's not, not that interesting. Um, so I try to show it whenever I can. Cheryl, if you want to see some cool tricks, check this out. So I'm using Streamlabs OBS over here. So this is my this is how the, the raw camera feed comes out. This is my um, screen that you see right here. And then this is how I show stuff if I want you to be able to see it, but I don't want you to see the actual content. So for example, if I wanted to check my email right now, and I would still want to show my screen, it comes up, you see that little, that fake iMac? It comes up on the screen, but you it's too small for you to actually read. So there's some stuff that I want to keep private. I don't mind that you see me checking email. I just don't want you to see the email. So I've got these different scenes in here listed out. Uh, let's see, next one. Biman, hi Neville Bai, what's your favorite food? So Neville Bai is like an Indian way to address me. Um, what's your favorite food? I'm so not picky with food. Um, Biman, uh, I, I like, I like basic stuff. I like some sort of fruit vegetable kind of thing with some meat. So yesterday I had steak, potatoes, and mushrooms. Um, today I'll probably have ground beef, avocado, something like that. Like, uh, very simple stuff. My mom was a great cook. Our mom is a really good cook. So I always had good food when I was growing up. So I never really actively sought it out. It just came to me. So, um, I'm a pretty simple eater actually. Um, what exercise, Biman, what um, exercise activity do you prefer to sharpen your axe, aka brain? Um, I like reading and I like following other smart people. So I actively, un like on my Twitter account, I have, I follow maybe 50 people and I very actively unfriend people, not unfriend, unfollow people that don't have very useful stuff where they just promote all the time. Um, I just don't like seeing that. I want to see like really good stuff. So I, I follow a lot of software people and stuff that are really smart, like programmers and stuff. Um, Manoj, what have you missed? Yeah, like Shikar said, not much. Now I was just working on my book structure. So I'm, I'm working on the book that's kind of like this, like the other book I wrote, it's really short. And I'm basically just working on the book structure um, as you can see over here. So it's called You're Gonna Die by Neville Medora. And I just outlined the entire structure. That, that's it. That's the whole thing. Uh, let's see. Other questions. Damn, this stream has so much valuable value. Thank you. Um, Shivansan R. Hey, Neville, shouldn't your chair be a bit higher? It doesn't look ergonomic. I mean, it feels comfortable right now. Um, uh, Shivansan, I, I actually... I'll just call you Shri. <laughs> um... This this whole setup moves up and down. So, for example, I can... There it goes. It can go up. 
So I can stand up, or I can just put it down. So um, I can move my chair up, too. It, it feels ergonomic. I think the reason that you might think that it doesn't look ergonomic is because the camera is above where I am. So my eye level when I'm sitting is down here, and you are actually up here at camera level. So it may look weird, but I don't know. I feel quite comfortable. I'm sitting cross-legged. I usually That's how I usually sit for some reason. Um, let's see. Next question. RJ. Uh, hi, Neville. Really brave to do the writing live. Respect. Thanks, RJ. I think it helps. It's kind of like a, it's a symbiotic relationship. I find I, um, I work a lot better when people watch. So normally in this office, I, I guess behind the forest, you can't see it right now, but there's another desk over there and there's more workspace back there. So, um, I usually have people over, but right now with the whole COVID thing, you know, we're not supposed to be hanging out or whatever. So this has become a better way of like allowing people to watch me work. So therefore I work more. Um, also it's, I think it's just more fun. It's just kind of fun to do it sometimes. Um, and RJ, he said, just a quick question. Do you use Google docs for all your writing projects? No, RJ, you can use some of my other live streams. I often write directly in the WordPress editor. So if it's a project where I'm sharing with someone and we're writing together, it's generally best to do it with Google Docs because it's the best shared editor on the planet. Like, it's not even close. Nothing comes even close. And so I do that. The um, other thing I usually do is if I'm writing a blog post, I like writing it directly into WordPress because there's no need to go from Google Docs to WordPress. It's just like, just write a WordPress. And I think the WordPress editor is pretty good. Not the Gutenberg editor. I don't like that one as much. Just the normal classic editor. Um, Shikar, Nev, do you use Ada while writing book chapters too? No, not really. Um, I think I think the Ada formula emerges naturally. So when I was, so Shikar, when I was doing the, um, when I was doing the book, <sighs> the the way that I structured this was kind of like kind of like Ada, but I wasn't thinking of Ada. But you basically have to tell people what your thesis is, show reasons why it works, show some more reasons to make them believe it too, and then leave them on a note to make them take action. So in a way, this is an Ada formula, but I'm not writing the chapters with Ada formula. I'm writing I'm writing the book structure with Ada formula, if that makes sense. But yeah, so the structure is written kind of in an ADA formula, um, the chapters are not. I, I don't think they need to be. Um, I'm not necessarily trying to sell someone really hard on this. I'm just trying to make a case that, hey, this is the way I view the world. Um, if you want to also, sure. And let's see, last questions. Um, Srini, Srini is easy. Loved your desk setup video, by the way. Thanks, Sri. Appreciate it. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Um, I'm very glad that during the whole COVID thing, I already had a full dedicated office in my place. Uh, this is the room I come into to do work. I don't really have a computer in the other rooms. Um, I have my laptop or iPad if I need, but generally I'll come into this room to do work. And I selected this room specifically because it only has one small window over there. And ironically, having lots of natural light used to be what I liked. But in my last place, I had so much natural light in the office area that it messed up my video calls all the time. So sometimes there's like tons of light coming in and today it's raining outside. So like there's not that much light coming in and I'd have to adjust the lighting each time. So I usually keep the blinds closed or if it's not super bright, I'll keep them open like this. But um, this place uh, is, is really nice to have. And I'm so glad I had a dedicated office when COVID hit. Uh, that makes things just a lot easier um, uh, Shri, oh, sorry, Paul. Oh, damn, other people asked. Uh, hike learning. I don't know what that means. Paul, you said, hey, Neville, love your work. Do you ever use tools like Hemingway app or Grammarly? Uh, Paul, no, I don't. I actually had Grammarly and I've used Hemingway app. The problem is I just don't, I just didn't end up using them that often. And Grammarly would suggest a lot of weird things. Like I don't write with proper grammar usually. And so it would, it would do too many suggestions and I, I just kind of got annoyed of it. And actually Google, Google Docs has a Grammarly type editor now. I mean, if you type, hey there, what doing? I bet it'll catch this, watch this. Look at that. See how, see how Google Docs, oh, sorry. I'm not sharing my screen, my bad. Uh, let me share my screen for you. 
So Paul, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna retype that so you can see it. I'm gonna say, hey there, what doing? So this is obviously not right grammar. And look, it actually underlines with this blue line now. Uh, Google Docs only used to do spell check with the red line. Now blue line like Grammarly. So it's kind of like, I don't know if I really need Grammarly that much. Um, so I can click this and I'll say, hey there, what doing? What are you doing? Look at that. It automatically corrected it. So I don't use Hemingway app. I don't use Grammarly. They are great tools and I think a lot of people like them. Um, I met the founder of Grammarly at HustleCon. Awesome dude. Um, crazy Russian guy. He was awesome. But um, I personally just use Google Docs for my writing usually. So um, let's take a look at the other questions. Paul. Uh, Shri, what's your preferred page size for a book? From the screen doesn't look like an A4 or US letter size. Um, yeah, you're right. That's actually kind of a problem. So this is a six. So the, my preferred size book is this. Um, the reason I like it is I've carried lots of books on planes and stuff in the, in the past. And I hate when there's like this big ass book. Like I just can't carry it. It takes up too much space. So this is the perfect size book for me. And this is six by nine um, that you can see over here. So six by nine. Yeah, so uh, one problem I had in the past with formatting a book was <laughs> all the spacing. So for example, um, I will have to go and make sure that each chapter starts on a new page. Then I have to export this to the Kindle format and make sure it's the right size. So this time for this book, I'm actually gonna hire someone from Fiverr to do the formatting for me. So I kind of don't care what the size is. But yes, uh, if you wanna see the size I'm using, page setup, it is A5, which is 14.8 centimeters by 21 centimeters, which was the closest I can get to, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, huh? Yeah, this might, uh, the, it was the closest size I can get. And I don't think you can do custom size, yeah. You can't do custom size on Google Doc. So I'm gonna export this later and have an editor go through it um, and change it up for me. Uh, so, do, do, do. let's see, what other questions you have? Thanks for the question, Shri. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Which place, Biman, which place are you in? I am in Austin, Texas right now. My whole family lives in Texas, specifically Houston. I grew up in Houston, Texas, uh, but I don't like Houston as much, but I like all the people there. And so I live two and a half hours away. So for Mother's Day, I drove home to Houston. Um, you know, Houston's really close. Uh, I, have a, I have a car, I drive back and forth. It takes me about two and a half hours to get from my apartment to my house in Houston. So my, my apartment in Austin to my house in Houston. So, uh, do, do, do. good point, Paul. Good point, thanks again. No problem, Paul. Um, and Jai, you're saying, why don't you teach copywriting from the beginning, how to get started like a course through streams? Uh, what? I don't know what that means. I think you're just saying, why am I not teaching copywriting? Uh, because I'm doing a work session, Jai. So I can't always teach. Uh, I teach inside my course, so you get all that stuff if you want. But right now I'm just doing a book. So I do other things, and this is how I think you hone your skills as a copywriter by writing other things, not just copywriting articles or something like that. Uh, DC Star, Texas, baby. Yeah, Texas is pretty awesome. Especially right now, we're like opening up and everything. they're just like, forget it. Like we're gonna open up the place and start getting back to normal. So I do enjoy Texas. I like the, the attitude in Texas of personal responsibility and such. Anyways, let's get back to writing this book all right so i think that's all i had to do for today was just outline the structure that was my main thing um i do i do i usually do consults on tuesdays and so i've got some calls and stuff after this that i have to do but i definitely wanted to get the, the outline of this book done and on my writing day tomorrow i will start 
um, I will probably write the rest of these chapters. So anyways, that was just how I think about this book. Um, I, hope, I hope that was kind of educational for you. Hope that you like that. Um, I'm gonna be documenting this process. I've got some friends that are helping me with some certain stuff, so I'll talk about that a little bit later. But right now I got I got the I got the book outlined. So now all I gotta do is fill in the chapters and get it edited, and that's the book. Um, the thing I'm going off of, I said how to self-publish a book. I did a I did a, a post about my previous book, this one that I did. And um, I wrote this book, what is this, like to Amazon or something? Yeah, so I wrote this book in oh, 2013, I think. And I documented the process. I even wrote chapters here. Um, look at this. Hey, it's Neville with hair. Right now I've got quarantine hair, so I have to grow back my hair, which is kind of annoying got to go through like an ugly duckling stage for a while but basically i wrote um i actually wrote that book like this also so similarly i'm doing this next book like this too um so i learned a lot from that and i'm going to update this post probably with this process also so i'll have two posts on that two books in there um uh, so Oh, and I, re I made this cool, um, I made this really cool advertisement for this book. So I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll pay someone again to make an advertisement for the next book. Um, I'm not sure. We'll see. Anyways, um, that's all I got for today. Thanks for joining me and watching me write this book. It was fun. I hope you learned something and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.